So next, I would like to introduce Ellie Kisiombe. Um, <laughs> Ellie has been in the asylum process in Ireland for almost six years now. Uh, she found a coping mechanism in becoming a campaigner and an advocate to end the direct provision system. has spent the last year volunteering with the Irish Refugee Council working on the campaign to end direct provision and was a key participant in public outreach and awareness raising activities. Um, Ellie is also a member and organiser with City of Sanctuary Dublin, a long time member of the Clondalk and Towers Residence Committee and a regular spokesperson in the media on issues that affect Ireland's asylum seeking and refugee community. Recently, Ellie was flagged as one of the people to watch in 2016 for her activism by the Irish Times journalist Una Mullally. Ellie is currently doing an introductory course on community and youth work, as well as being a full-time mum and an active member of her community. <laughs> Ellie will talk about her life as an asylum seeker in Ireland and her consistent campaigning to promote the rights of people going through the asylum process here in Ireland and the discredited reception system known as direct provision. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't do big English because most of the people I represent, they nothing I don't need to any English word. So as I express myself, as I'm speaking about these women, I want you to understand me so that one day when they come in front of you, seeking avenues, how they can get abortion, you can be able to understand them without no excuse of using a big word of English. Thank you very much. I am here today fighting for the productive justice of all women in Ireland. We understand that migrants and asylum seekers and other marginalized people are disproportionately affected by Ireland's outrageous restrictive abortion laws and thus more likely seek assistance of the rogue agencies. This one, it's no coincidence that the most prominent cases in the fight over abortion access in recent memory have been without women of color. Miss Why, Miss Why, she came from this war torn zone, being raped and come here. And even in our culture, we, we respect people. I'm sure on that day, she respected this doctor and said, I beg you, sir, please take out this baby. I don't need it. I've been raped. Can you please do that for me? But you refused her. We're talking another migrant woman who she was dying. And she said, it's either you save me or the baby. But the Irish government with its laws, which I believe I'm in a democratic country, choose to deny this woman and we lost two lives. What about that? And I'm standing here. And I'm standing here speaking in a country where I want to feel safe, but I don't even have any single human rights. The money I get is 19 euro 10 a week. How can I put up money? Even the 13th amendment does not stand for me. Where are you putting me as a woman asylum seeker? What about those hundreds who doesn't even have a status at all? They're not a documented at all. What are you thinking about them? You have to start including us. We are the community of Irish. You are not taking us anywhere. We are living in an island. And this issue is for all of us. I'm and I'm talking of a mother, which it pains me. I never know Savita. But when I walk in my shoes, when I can't even go out and work, when I can see women not even cooking for their children, I feel like I've known Savita since the day my mother put out in 
world. And we have to and we have to start the Irish government. The 13th Amendment should apply to us all. We should be able to travel. And the repeal 8th should happen.